Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we here are blazing with the glory of God. We are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. We want to just thank our brother RJ for showing up for us today, Rufus Johnson. Listen, go out, support this brother. I'm telling you, we're extremely proud of him. We thank God for him coming and gracing us today and leading us in praise and worship into the throne of grace. Hey, let's go ahead um, and just, I want to go into prayer real quick and then I'll come and share some other things. Um, Father, we just thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We thank you for this time of just assembly together with you, with believers across this planet. We thank you right now for the precious Holy Spirit who lives, abides, and dwells on the inside of us, the one ready to give us peace, to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as our great teacher today. That, Father, we thank you that your presence is like no other and that we bow before you and we worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you so much and we just thank you so much for sending your son to die for us. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. And so we just thank you for the newness of life that has been granted unto us through the shed blood of Christ, that your grace is sufficient for us. So, Father, even as we go forth today, we thank you right now that we pray over every member, partner, and supporter of this work today. We speak peace upon them, grace, grace upon their lives. We thank you that mountains will be reduced to plateaus, and we thank you that burdens will be removed and yokes destroyed today, even as the preached word of God goes forth. We thank you that signs and wonders will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that families will be restored. We thank you that minds will be renewed, hearts changed and transformed into the glorious light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And so we thank you so much, Father, and we give you praise in advance for it, for even kingdom prosperity as we begin to teach and dive into your word. We thank you that, Father, you begin to radically change our mindsets to receive all the promises that are yes and amen. And so we just thank you for it. We serve notice on Satan right now. Yeah, we serve notice on every demonic force. We bind the wicked one. Your word declares whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And so we declare right now that the blessing of the Lord is strong upon us today, that it make us rich and you add no sorrow with it. And so we give you glory and we give you praise and adoration for it now. I rebuke sickness and disease right now. Yeah, Yeah, I command kidneys to be healed right now. I command ulcers to leave. Yeah, I command gallbladders to be restored and made whole in Jesus' name. Kidney stones removed. Father, thank you for it. Thank you that heart valves are opening and closing properly. Thank you that blood vessels are flowing properly and working and functioning well. I declare normal T-cell counts in physical bodies now, neurological conditions. I declare that they are healed now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you glory and we give you praise for it now. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And so, Father, we give you glory in advance. I thank you for marriages being restored this day. I thank you right now, relationships being mended, hearts broken, hearts being healed. Wounded spirits being healed right now. Wounded souls being restored right now. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you glory for it now, Father. We give you glory for it now. We magnify your great and wonderful name. So let you be glorified. Let the church be uh, be edified. Let Jesus be magnified in this place today. There is no distance in the spirit. And we thank you for it now. So let great revelation knowledge flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Yeah, even minister through my hands as I stretch forth towards the screen and the cameras and that everybody in in the presence of this word today will receive a tangible touch from you. We give you glory that every heart is open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you. We thank you for it now. And we say that it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray, praise, and give thanks. Amen. 
Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and worship God wherever you are right now. Begin to thank him. Begin to praise him right now. Yeah, I know sometimes it's different. I know we're not all together physically, but right now, wherever you are in the spirit, we're together. We're one. Begin to lift up your hands and begin to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For he is worthy to be praised. Glory be to God. Glory to God. You have something to thank him for. I know you've been through a lot. We've all been through a lot this past year. But God is still a good God and we are still here. We're still amongst the living. We thank God even for those loved ones that may have passed, for people that may have gone on before us, that we pray for families and the comfort of loved ones. Um, we, yeah, we, we just speak blessing over them right now. And listen, I'm telling you, the best is still yet to come. Listen, Jesus is on his way, folks. And it's time that we now receive and walk in the, full, the fullness of who we are in Christ Jesus. God is, man, God has been really drilling some things in my heart. And the time is wrapping up. There's great transition that's taking place. There's great transition and shifting that's taking place. There's been a shifting in the spirit. There's been transitions moving and, and going on. There are things that God has been, he's been promising his people, that he has promised his people. There are things that many of you have been praying for, that you've been believing God for for years, and this is the time for you to put it on. This is the time to see it manifested, that there are no more excuses. This is the time to execute. This is the time to aggressively pursue the thing that God has created and called you to do. Now is the time, says the Lord. Now is the season, says the Lord. Now is the time. Listen, I know, I know for some of you it's been hard. For some of you, you've been asking God, where are you in this season? Where are you, Father? I can't trace you in certain areas. God says in his word, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That has been his promise. His word has always declared that. He says he'll make his home in you, that your body is his temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. For the born again believer, God has placed his spirit in you and he is ever present with us. So no matter where you go, God is there. No matter what situation, God is there ready. The Bible says I'm a very present help in time of trouble. Very present, very present, very present. Glory to God. Very present. Call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. Not just from bo being born again, but being saved and delivered out of the situation that you're currently going through. God says deliverance is here, is here right now. Yeah. Shukumbre sitika. Man, I sense the power of God flowing. I sense, yeah, bring that up a little bit if you can. I sense the power of God flowing. There's healing that's taking place. There's deliverance that's taking place. Yeah, 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 past mistakes, past failures. The shame, I command the shame to leave you now. I command condemnation to go now. Guilt to leave you now. I know you didn't do it the right way back then, but God says you have a fresh start, a clean slate. You can go from here, start from here, move from here, grow from here, go from here, wherever you are in your life. God says now, strike now for my favor is upon you. My grace is sufficient for you that I, there is such favor that's upon you that you don't even recognize just yet. And you will not fully recognize it until you move, until you step and you will see the doors open, says the Lord. And before you even get there, good, I have already prearranged and made ready certain things for you. And you're going to see a level of ease that you didn't realize how easy it would be for you to acquire, for you to move into that place, for you to acquire that property, for you to get that job, for you to get that degree for you to get and accomplish whatever it is. He says, you got to move though. You've been sitting waiting for me to push you, but God says you need to step now. Whatever it is, you need to step, step out on faith. And my provision is right there. It's right there. Shebrama, Shukumbre. And there's a kingdom mandate where God is quickening his body like never before. And there are men and women who are rising up out of the ashes, out of the dust, 
out of the dust and despair of the things that they've gone through. And there is going to be a refreshing, says the Lord, of my body. And there's going to be a replenishing even of your faith. And there's going to be a stirring up even the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and working of miracles. And you're going to see restorations like you've never seen before. Well, yeah, it's dark. Yeah, it's dark in Egypt, but it's light in Goshen. I'm telling you, the light is upon the body of Christ right now. The light is upon you right now. The light of God's favor is upon you. The light of his glory is within you right now. And you shall see my glory manifested unto thee. But I didn't see it before. I didn't see it before. See, you've been struggling through unbelief, through doubt and unbelief. I pray that your faith fail you not right now. I pray that your faith fail you not. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Let laughter and let joy come into your home once again. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Yeah, glory to God. Let it slice through the thickness of doubt and unbelief. Yeah, in that depressive state, I command the glory to cut through it right now. Angels, I dispatch them to your house right now. Yeah, to cut through the despair, to cut through the thickness and the bitterness and the torment right now. Glory to God. I declare light. Your life is worth living. God has a plan of success for you. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Le broche et de combra. Yeah, bosh et le bro. For those that pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to worship God. Those that don't, don't worry about it. Come on, in your understanding, begin to thank him. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We shout hallelujah unto your great name. For you are a good God, and there is none like unto you, possessor of heaven and earth. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We praise your holy name. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now you need to begin to shout. You need to begin to praise. You need to begin to thank him right now. Glory to God. And it cuts through. I keep hearing that. The thickness of the stuff that you've been dealing with. It's like if somebody walked in your home, they could sense the atmosphere is not right. And God says you need to adjust your atmosphere. You control your atmosphere. You control your atmosphere. Stop letting your atmosphere control you. Stop letting your emotions rule you. God says, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. Yeah. But this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Some of you are feeling lonely because the day is Valentine's Day. You feel like you don't have a boo. You don't have somebody with you to love on you. God loves you. And I know some of you, you want relationship. You want fellowship. You want that love and companionship. But God says this. He's the lover of your soul. Become whole. God wants you whole. That you receive his love and that you love yourself. And that God is working on some of your self-esteem right now. Where during this time where you consider it loneliness or isolation, God is like, I am working some things in you, out you, and through you right now. Where you're going to be to such a degree of free, there's going to be such a level of freedom that now you can properly receive the right person into your life. So that you won't make them, them a victim of your past relationships. There's healing. There's deliverance. And there's freedom. I'm just, I'm just hearing certain things. God is healing. God is restoring. God is delivering. And some of you is like, you know what? I'm just ready to shut down. I wanted to shut out things, shut out the world. But now God is saying this, get into my presence, get into my word, and you're going to experience the joy unspeakable and full of glory that I've always declared to you and had for you. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let the Lord be the strength of your life. Celebrate yourself today. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Think well of yourself. Think well of you. No, you're not ugly. I, I just hear that. No, you're not. You are beautiful in God's eyes. God, listen, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He created you. You're the glory of your God. 
Come on, sis. You're the glory of God. You're the glory of God. Carry yourself with dignity. Carry yourself as regal. Carry yourself as royal. Believe. You got to believe that. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But you need to believe just how beautiful you are. Because what will happen is you'll begin to depend on someone else's affirmation and approval. But you got to receive God's first and foremost. And realize that, wait a minute, I've been made in God's image and after his likeness. And God don't make any junk. And when he created me, he knew exactly what he was doing. With my lips, hips, fingertips, the whole nine, whatever it is, God knew how he made me. And I'm the baddest thing this side of heaven. I'm not talking about you being arrogant or nothing like that, but you got to be confident in who you are. Carry yourself. Confidence is beautiful. Confidence attracts. I'm, I'm just going there. I'm just, I, I sense I need to go there. Carry yourself with regal. Listen, men, this is for a woman now. Whoever needs to hear this, confidence is sexy to men. It's attractive. When you're confident about who you are, there's something about that. A real man, a secure man, is attracted to a secure woman. Mm, that, Lord, I just said something for you right there. You attract who you are. You attract who you are. Become confident. And God, God will show you. In his season and in his time. And don't you worry about having children. Because you feel like you either hidden for it or crossed over. God says, I got it. I got you. I got you. I will grant you the desires of your heart. Whoo. Glory to God. Man. Man, I sense this anointing. <laughs> I sense it. Glory to God. Mm. Just how much he loves you. I sense that more than ever. How much God loves us. He loves his people. And he wants you to live a good life. But we have to cooperate with him. Believe it now. Receive it now. Glory to God in Jesus. Hey, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm trying to get rid of shift. But I hear somebody asking God a question. Lord, what about this business deal? What about this thing that I'm supposed to do? Should I sign the paperwork? Should I move forward with it? God will give you the peace as to what you need to do, as to the progression you need to have where your career and your relationships are concerned, that there has been a shifting in your life, in your career, in your goals and objectives. And sometimes you've questioned yourself and you've tried to figure out, did I make the right decision? God says, yes, you did but allow me to show you to navigate because there are some people who don't intend for your good, but I will show you those people clearly so that you will never have to wonder who's for you or who's against you. You will know it clearly. You will know it clearly. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, RJ. I appreciate that, man. You helped set a tone. You helped set that atmosphere to come in. Appreciate you, brother. Love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, y'all, um, today uh, we want to continue. I'm not going to be long with you. Um, we've been talking about Kingdom Prosperity, the series. Uh, but before I get into that, I, I have to make this announcement, the statement, I, I want to. Um, just recently, we just found out the body of Christ as a whole has come to find out that a great general has transitioned. Um, Apostle Frederick Casey Price. And I wanted to just honor him and salute him today. His children, pa Pastor Frederick Price, the second, and we just, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Um, to all of this family, the children, the girls, the grandchildren, everyone involved, we want to say that our condolences are with you. We love and appreciate you. And just to let you know what this man meant to me personally, um, never I never had the opportunity to meet him personally. 
But just like so many others, my life and ministry were greatly impacted. The ministry that I grew up in was a word of faith ministry that was very well connected with Apostle Price. And he had come to, to minister and to share. And my pastor at the time, he was a part of, at that point, it was the Fick Whiffen Board, the Fellowship of Inner City Word of Faith Ministries. And um, when, when I saw this man of God, I began to see just the boldness um, in his teaching, the, the faith that he taught. And he dealt a lot with prosperity and faith and how, how to live this life according to the word of God. And I got to be honest, just to see a black man as a young black man, a young black child at that time, to see a black man walking in that abundance, walking successful and, and teaching with the boldness and the confidence Man, it was like, you know, there were times I'd be like, man, did he just really say that the way he said it? Well, it was hilarious, but I loved it. And even as a child and as a, as a teenager, I was drawn uh, to his ministry to hear and to, and to feed off the word of God. And so I was introduced, you know, and everybody knew evidence. When, when that song came on and that broadcast came on and to see the consistency that this man lived, and to hear the level of integrity that he walked in and excellence consistently throughout his life. That's a huge thing. That is a huge thing. And so we want to salute him today. That is a job well done, sir. That listen, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know he is receiving his reward. He, man, I'm telling you, I tell people all the time, the Bible says we don't mourn like the world mourns with no hope. But we understand that now that his body is here in the dust of the ground. But his, listen, I'm telling you, his spirit is alive and well. His spirit and soul are completely intact. He is forever with the Lord. And I'm telling you, man, that is such an honorable thing to just see. And, you, you know, and I, I don't want to just mention everything so far as what the, the conditions behind his transition. But I want you to know this. Even in death, there's victory. Even in death for the believer, there's victory. And so... Listen, I just want to say on behalf of the Spirit of Fire Fellowship family, we love you, Apostle. We are missing you here, but we know your legacy continues. Your legacy continues. And I was just feeding off of some of his message last night in preparation for, <laughs> for this morning. And um, today I'm going to talk about the purpose of prosperity. Um, and and, and there, there's more... <sighs> Let me make this statement. People need to see us excel and accelerate and be successful because it will motivate others. And we need to understand the will of God concerning prosperity. And it is God's will for us to prosper. And we've been dealing with this. I already prayed, so I'm just jumping into this thing now. And that even in 3 John 2, he says, I wish a prayer above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So to the degree of your soul prospering, your life will prosper, okay, in every area. And we know prosperity means wholeness. It means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. It means shalom, peace. That means a completeness. And so with that, that means your spiritual life to prosper in your spirit is called born again, to be born again and have God's nature abide in you, to be prosperous in your soul is to have peace of mind for your mind to be well, your thought processes to be intact, for you to think in alignment with the word of God, that your mind, your memory, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your imagination, everything, your emotional status is, is secure in Christ, secure in the word of God, that we can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. Then their physical prosperity to have every need met, every bill paid and to walk in overflow more than enough. God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you and your seed is going to be blessed. And we learned even on Thursday that, listen, if any man be in Christ in Galatians three, that he is Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So God has promised to bless us. Even in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, God blessed man. He blessed mankind to be fruitful, to replenish, to have dominion, to subdue, to dominate in this earth. And I'm telling you to multiply 
God has increase on his mind concerning us and he wants us to rule well in life. And so we want to talk about this purpose today and we want to deal with some things. And so what I want to do is I want to begin to sow this into you and continue. And after this, maybe next week, we'll get into some laws and principles as to how to function in kingdom prosperity. But today I want to talk about the purpose of it right now. And it says this. Now, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. And I'm in the New King James Version. I'm going to be ministering from this today. Uh, Apostle Price used to minister uh, a lot from uh, the New King James. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that in honor of Apostle Price today. I'm going to preach this thing today, man. I'm telling you, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it reads, we then as workers together with him, talking about Christ, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. We then as workers together with him, even talking about the father with God himself. Listen, we also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Now, the thing I want to pull out of this is we are workers together with him. We are workers together with God. It didn't say we're workers together for God, but it says with him. Now with him, <clears throat> if in your Bible, in my Bible, it shows it in italics. So that means it was put there by privilege of the translators, um, but it wasn't necessarily in the original, but it still says we are workers together with God. We are workers together. We are workers together. We are working with God on something. Now this is important. And watch this. It also shows us that God is working on something and we must find out what our part is. God is about doing something and he wants us involved with him. Now I want to share some things, understanding that, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with my notes today. In Deuteronomy 818, let's go there real quick. I want to go there. So now we want to understand that we're working with God. Hallelujah. Now it says here in Deuteronomy 8:18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Now this is a huge scripture. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power. Who gives you power? The Lord your God. He gives you power to get wealth. Now, it didn't say that he gives you wealth here. It says he gives you the power or the ability to get wealth. Now, let me stop here real quick. And we got, we got to just address this. If wealth was not in the will and plan of God for you, why would he give us the ability to get it? it, it, it it's real simple. And I just tell people, just think. Reading is fundamental. It, 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 it's, it's simple. Why would he give us power to do something he did not want us to do? That would be con that would be counterproductive and contradictory to what he tell he's telling us to do. So if he wanted you lacking, broke, no money, no supply, no abundance, why would he give you the power to get it? God has given us the power to get. I know we're going to deal with this now. We're going, to, we're going to deal with, because I know some people thinking about consuming upon your own lust and being greedy and all that stuff. But let's just establish first that God has given, given us the power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So the establishment of his covenant is part of the work that we are doing together with him. So he wants to establish his covenant. Now, we talked about this, that God showed up to this man by the name of Abram and told him, I'm El Shaddai. I'm, I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. And God made covenant with Abraham. Even when we talked about the covenant of increase and God made covenant with him. He says, not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless your descendants after you. Your children and your children's children will be blessed. Your seed will be blessed. 
all nations will be blessed through you, Abram, because now I'm using you as the representative of my covenant agreement to bless you, to increase you more and more, you and your children. Glory to God. Now watch this. <laughs> so now we want to understand something here. So part of it, now I look at this twofold. I look at this twofold that God has blessed us to, he, he told Abram, that, listen, you are blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. All families. He didn't say some, he said all families of the earth. It is God's desire for all families of the earth to be blessed. So if you don't feel like you are blessed, if you don't feel like that, you know, you're getting ahead in life. It is God's desire for all families to be blessed for everybody that we all eat, that we all win, that we all are successful. That is the heart of God. He does not want anyone left behind. Now the issue is how do we do it? How do we get it? But I want to show something else here that not only God gives us the ability to get wealth so that we can help him establish, but the giving of the ability to obtain the wealth is part of the establishment of the promise that he told Abraham that not only would God bless him, but his seed also. And we are God, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So God blessing us, us increasing, us prospering is part of that covenant agreement that God made with Abram. And he wants us to walk in this blessing. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter three, verse 24. The book of Genesis chapter three, verse 24. <clears throat> and it reads here. So he drove out the man, God drove out the man and placed, this is talking about Adam, and we understand what happens. Um, God told Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then as a result, Eve partook of that fruit, gave it to Adam because Satan tempted. Now they messed up. And so now they get kicked out of the garden. And he drove man, drove out the man, and he placed a cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So we see, now watch this, we see that in the beginning, God wanted a family. He created man. He wanted man to replenish, subdue the earth, have dominion. And so God wanted a family. And so he created Adam and placed Adam in the garden. So we dealt with that the other week and gave him instruction. But Adam didn't follow the instruction. So God put Adam in plenty. He put him in the garden that was lush, that was prosperous. And so he put him in success in a successful position, in a prosperous position. The Bible talks about the gold and the dillium and the onyx stone and those precious material that was there in the garden as well. So God placed Adam in prosperity. Now watch this. Now we're specifically talking about financial right now. We want to deal with that because that's such an area that's been sometimes misrepresented. Sometimes people misunderstood and people don't don't understand it correctly. But we want to deal with this now. And he says this now. Now watch this. And he created Adam and placed him in the garden and gave him instruction. But Adam didn't follow it. So God had to drive him out of the garden or a man would have been in a permanently condemned state because if he would have eaten of the tree of life in that state, there would have been no way of redemption. Now, now that's a whole nother teaching I'd have to do, but just, just trust me right now. The Bible is about the redemptive work of bringing God's family back together to its rightful place and state. That's what the Bible is about. It's a book of redemption. It's a book of us now. It is, it's, it's leading up to the culmination of Jesus entering into the earth dying for the sins of men so that we can be reconnected to God. But now that we're reconnected to God and we're born again, we receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, God, our daddy. But now after this born again process, there is a restoration of the soul that needs to take place that aligns with our spiritual makeup 
so that now we can execute and begin to manifest in this natural world what should have happened all along from the beginning. We see in the beginning the count of creation. And that on the seventh day, God rested from his works. When God finished his work, the Bible said that it was good. And let's go to Genesis chapter two, verses one and two. I want to show you something here. And it says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So now it says here that God finished his work. So he rested. So now if God finished his work, there was nothing left to do. He finished his work. That's why he rested because he was done. Okay. So now let's go to John five because now remember this, we're going to go to John chapter five. I want to show you something here because this is going to be important because if, if God rested from working on this seventh day, and this is where we get our Sabbath, our day of rest, our time, there's a time to work, but then there's a time to relax. Jesus said something here. Now, this says the man, verse, uh, we're going to do John chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. John chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And it says the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father has been working until now, and I have been working. So now, let's look at something here. He says, Jesus said that his father has been working until that point. But in Genesis 2, it said that God had finished his work. But we see that the work in Genesis, so now, now was there a contradiction? Why would God continue to work if he finished? Well, there's something, it's a very simple answer. Genesis 2, 1 and 2 was talking about the work of creation. So the work of creation was done. That's why he rested then. But the work of restoration is now what Jesus is referring to now. That now there's a work to get man back to its rightful place. And now, but we see here that I believe now this is me. So I believe that Jesus, that it's the redeeming and the restoring of man to what was originally intended in Genesis 1 28 that we're talking about here, that man was created to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, have dominion, have dominion, to replenish the earth. That was the original blessing that God placed upon man in the beginning. So now going back to Deuteronomy 8.18, God gave us power to get wealth to help establish a covenant that he made even with Abram, but also as a part of the redemption package process of us getting back to where we rightfully belong. And so now your prosperity is a part of that redemption restoration package that watch this when we talk about prosperity and wholeness god wants you whole just going back to now i see how god is tying this stuff back he told me he says mike he says if you're good in six areas you are good in your life and i'm talking about it, and i'm gonna keep talking about it for sake of those that have not heard it so let me just share this real quick just because some of you have already heard this Please do not. Now, I should have said this from the beginning for some people that might have felt like they needed to turn away because, well, I already know what Pastor going to say about this. No, you don't. You don't know everything. I never say it the same way twice. But now it's not just about you. You can't be selfish right now. This is about others who have not heard some of this before and that we want to make sure that everybody is on the same playing field, on a level playing field. And there are people not only that are hearing this the first time now, but are going to hear it for days and years to come that as they go back and look at this. And so I want to make sure that they have a good understanding of this. And so now we understand that God bless man and he wants us to replenish, multiply, subdue the earth. And so God wants us to get wealth so that his covenant can be established, not just the fulfillment of the promise he made to Abram, but also now he wants us to now be wealthy so that we can get things accomplished and done in the earth. Now, now let, me, let me continue here. In Genesis 8, 21 and 22, 
because this is important. This is important. It's going to require finances to get the job done of subduing this planet and walking in the dominion that God called for us to do. It's going to take resources. It's going to take stuff. There are so many things that we need to do. Just this morning, my wife and I, we were talking about some things, outreach ideas and stuff. Listen, all it takes is the money. The ideas and the vision is there. But all it would take is to be able to stroke a check, to pay for this or to take care of that. And God needs you to have this wealth in your hands and to rule and control it so that we can get his kingdom agenda done but God wants us to get it his way and to function in kingdom purpose and the kingdom agenda and this kingdom renaissance, this mindset that God has concerning wealth, riches, abundance, and he wants us to walk in it, but he also wants us to walk in the character. He also has warnings concerning it. We'll deal with those, but right now I'm just dealing with the purpose of it. God wants us to have this wealth so that we can get his agenda done in the earth. Okay? No, I got to say that again. Because it's not about you. It's about others too. He wants you blessed, but he wants others blessed. Blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. What, 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 what could you do if you had more than enough money? Well, I don't need that much. You know, I don't need a million dollars. Well, if you just need $10,000, why don't you go ahead and believe God for the other 990000 well, yeah, $990,000 and go ahead and sow that and give that away and you just go ahead and keep the 10000 and live off of that. But now, God, watch this. How many families can you put up? How many homes can you build? How many schools can be supplied with new computers? How many new programs can be done? How many buildings can be erected? How many lives, how many communities can be transformed and changed? Food trucks, warehouses, supply can be done if we have the resources in our hands to do it. A lot of times it ain't lack of vision, it's lack of resources. And so God wants you to succeed. He wants you to prosper. He wants your household to advance. This is just not about you and your household having more than enough. It's not just you and your household being good that y'all just gave able to go on your vacation and do that. And he wants you to have that. He wants you to be successful with that. But he wants you to be in a position to be a blessing to somebody else. Can you go to your neighbor's house and pay for six months of utilities so that they can get on their feet? Can we have a transitional home that people that are struggling can go and live in while they find employment, start their business, get them themselves going. Now, not only do we give them the fish, but teach them how to fish. And so now they can begin to go and be successful. How many kids can we put through college? How many people that need scholarships that you say, you know what, this household, the May household, we're going to put Susie through school and we're going to put Bobby through school and we're going to put Jamal through school and we're going to put little Mike over there through school. We got it. We can stroke the check. Listen, we ain't got to wait for somebody. We ain't got to wait for a grant to be, you know, to fill out some paperwork for a grant to be approved. We got the money in the bank where we can stroke the check. And we just say, hey, we'll check on you and make sure that you're doing well. Listen, I'm telling you, that is a possibility, folks, and your mind has to adjust now. It has to adjust to not just you being taken care of, but to be able to take care of, take care of others and to be a blessing to others. All right, come on, this is important. Come on, come on, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. I know this, but it's like, I'm going through this. I get it. Everybody going through something. But God wants you blessed. Blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. Now watch this. Genesis, let's go to Genesis chapter 8. How much time I got here? All right. Genesis chapter 8. I ain't going to keep you long. Genesis 8, 21 through 22. Genesis chapter 8, verses 21 through 22. I want, to, want us to read this real quick. And it says, And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. The, then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy everything as I have done. This is the covenant he's made even with Noah after the destruction of the planet. He says this in the wiping out of society and humanity. 
And he says, he's starting over again. He says, I'm not going to do that again anymore. He says, while the earth remains, here we go. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. As long as the earth remains. Now I want to focus on the first part of this verse. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest is not going to cease. Now we got to understand something here. That harvest is the result of seed time. Harvest is the result of seed time. And I want to submit that God giving us power to get wealth. I want to submit this now that God giving us the power to get wealth to establish his covenant is initiated primarily first and foremost through seed time and harvest or sowing and reaping or planting and receiving a harvest. So now this is the way in which he does it. He wants us to sow. If you understand this compound word, seed time, harvest. Now, this, this is an interesting thing. Now, if I, if I was a farmer, if I was a farmer and I had 100 acres of land and I sold seed into that land, I would have 100 acres of harvest based off of the amount of land that I, that I have to sow into. So that means I sold the equivalent of 100 acres acres worth of seed. Now, let me ask this question. I want you to just think real simple. If I wanted 200 acres of harvest, what would I need to do? If I, if I wanted 200 acres, I already have a hundred and I've sown into that hundred acres and I've seen the hundred acre harvest come, but I want to now receive 200 acres of harvest. What do I need to do? Real simple. I need another hundred acres of land. I need to expand so that I can sow more. So if I sow more seed, I can get more harvest. So now the thing is this, 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 this is the issue here. Most people, a lot of people want the extra harvest, but they don't want to sow the extra seed. And according to God's plan, in order to receive a level of harvest, you have to sow that level of seed. So a lot of people sow expecting this harvest that really is not in alignment with the level of seed that they've sown. And so, it, and for many years, there are people, there are some people that have been in, 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 in Christ for years and have been giving, but have never broken past a certain level of giving that you still just sold the $20 because, and you really just do it for your conscience. Now, listen, I'm not doing this to, to, to belittle, to, uh, what to put a guilt trip on you to condemn. But if you want greater, you have to do greater. And all, listen, to do the same thing and expect different results is insanity. And so God is saying, if you want to expand your harvest, you need to begin to increase your seed. It's, it's just that simple. And so what God is saying now is, and, it, and it's important, the ground that you sow into, to determine that level of harvest. Even scripture talks about 30, 60, and 100 fold return. And you want to be able to receive a full supply, a full harvest off of the seed that you sow. So now watch this. This is important because we can't forget that God, listen, in this beginning, that Adam turned over authority in this planet to Satan and his desire, Satan's desire is to get us focused on things and to neglect getting God's agenda done. See, now that, that's, it's, it's, all about, it's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. It's all about that. And so that's, that's why the importance of how the message is taught, how it's received, how it's carried out, because you really have to have plenty of character to have them plenty of money. Because we'll get into, because people, when it talks about it's harder for a rich man to enter into heaven, um, you know, it talks about that, then the camel to go through the eye of a needle. And then the disciples looked amongst themselves there and they were saying, well, who then can be saved? And so, I mean, who then now? Yeah, can be saved. And so now watch this. Jesus was just simply saying it's harder for a man who's acquired in this planet, in this earth, in this world system 
to now go into God's way of doing things because now they said, I've done it myself. And he says, you got to be warned against this, that the strength of my hand has acquired this, that what I've done has gotten this taken, you know, has, has helped me to accomplish this in this success. And God says, you can't forget the Lord, your God, because it's he that gave you the ability to acquire that wealth. It's he that gave you the ability to be successful. And don't you ever forget that. It's all about him. It's about his agenda. And so now, because some people, what happens is when they start coming up, some people do this, that now they get off of doing it God's way. They get off of the thing that got them there to begin with. And now all of a sudden they think they don't need God. And so God, he, there's a warning concerning that. And so now what Satan wants you to do is he wants you to get on his system where now he's puffed up and elevated. And that now all of a sudden arrogance and pride can be found in your heart versus you now humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and saying, Lord, I'm going to do it your way. Here are your resources. This money is yours and I'm honoring you with it. And so now I'll begin to plant. I'll begin to sow. I'll be a blessing. I'm blessed. And so I'm going to be a blessing to people's lives. And so we cannot forget that. And so we cannot allow things to usurp God's position in our lives. It is okay for us to have nice stuff. I believe that wholeheartedly. It's okay for us to wear the best, dry the best, live in the best, eat the best, because we are king's kids. God, listen, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But now God's saying this, you got to make sure you keep it in your heart, this purpose for this prosperity and success that God wants you to have. And prosperity is about being in a position to be a worker together with God and not just to acquire things. And Satan will perpetuate getting more and more stuff continuously. However, God wants us to know that there is an unlimited supply that he has for us to enjoy. And so we must operate by the principles of God and the laws of God or God's kingdom system in order to experience this level of increase and to be workers with him in restoring his family. Everything that we need to get the job done costs money and it requires money. So we must have it in order to get things done. So God is saying, how do we do this? How do we do this? Now, real simple. Now, now some of you, listen, I, I need you to listen to me. I need you to get this and I need you to grab this. God wants you to be successful so that he can get his agenda done. He wants you to prosper to get his agenda done. But if you are robbing, if you're withholding, and now you never want to release to be a blessing, you always questioning something. Whenever God says to do this and you've been stubborn in it and just refuse to give and refuse to plant, but expect something in return. Even the Bible talks about this. And I, I'll have to get into this in a whole nother section. When Paul talked about giving and he talked about, I, I don't even want to get there. I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to go there. And so now I want to read this real quick and I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this because this is a mindset. This is a renewal that's going on. God wants you to get this. Now, some of you sitting there like, okay, I know this. Da, 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 da. Okay. Come on. Prophesy some more. No, you got to get this. We got to take God's word and renew our minds to get certain things done. Cause after all of the emotion of the anointing lifting and after all this stuff settles down, how do you think about things? What is your thinking like? How do you, do you believe God? Do you trust God? What is it now? How do we get this wealth? How does God get this wealth to us? Let's go to Joshua chapter one and I'm going to read this Joshua chapter one this is the last scripture I'm going to today. Joshua chapter one verses one through eight. And it says here, and it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan and you, you and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses from the wilderness and this um, Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. 
No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you should divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Now God has put them, I'm telling you, talking about real estate. He's talking about this land, this territory that they were to acquire and to possess. He says, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. Watch this. According to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Wherever you go. He says, don't neglect my laws. Don't neglect my word. We're going to talk about that's the word of God. Don't neglect my word. Don't neglect my principles. Don't neglect my laws. Listen, God promised them this land, but they had to go in and fight for it. They had to go in and possess what was rightfully theirs through the promise that God made to them. But now they had to do something. And so you and I have to possess what's already been made available to us. And so by grace are we saved through faith. Grace has made it available, but our faith lays hold and now acquires and receives what grace has already bestowed upon us. God's goodness, his unmerited favor. And so God is saying, watch this, without, without works, faith is dead. Faith without works is dead being left alone. So you are not going to have to get up and do something to acquire what it is God has already provided for us. Then he tells them in verse 8, he says this, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Day and night, that just means continuously. That you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The Amplified says you will learn to deal wisely in the affairs of life. There is wisdom that will come when we follow God's principles, God's patterns, and his ways of doing things. We will see the success that he has already predetermined, prearranged, and made ready for us to live. And so now, if you want to achieve and accomplish this good life, you're going to have to follow. You and I, we have to follow the word of God, the principles and the plans that he sets in place and to systematically do these things and intentionally do it so we can, can see the fulfillment of the prosperity and success that God has for us. Now, now next, next week we're going to start dealing with what are these laws? How do we start applying them now? How do we start digging in to now see this increase. So we're expecting increase this year. I don't care whatever is going on. Listen, the principles of God are pandemic proof. So we can increase even in this time. Usually if you look at history, there were many millionaires that were created when hard times hit the earth as a whole. There are people who took advantage of the time and the moment. When I say took advantage, they saw a window of opportunity and they rushed into it. And they begin to start things, begin to do things. You know, there's a quote that says, um, necessity is the mother of all invention. That there are things that are going to be created. Remember, the word of the Lord came about the witty inventions, the ideas, the innovations in science and technology that were going to take place. And so now, as we're receiving this word, as we're now laying foundation, as we begin to now execute and to begin to walk in these laws, I need for you to understand it is the will of God, number one, for us to walk in wealth for us to walk in increase, prosperity and success. Now I'll tell you a little bit, when we talk about wealth, we're gonna talk about time. Because when your, your real wealth is, gener is, is really discovered or seen by how much time can you live if you stop working right now? That's your level of wealth. If you, can, if you just steal paycheck to paycheck, you're not walking in wealth. You may be walking in provision status. And I wanna to talk to you about the five levels of provision the five levels of, of increase. Um, and we're going to deal with those things. Okay. So I want you to be ready. I want us to begin to now attack this area and begin to structure ourselves to begin to increase and to have success. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's every head bow, every eye close. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for lives being transformed and changed. We thank you for the teaching of your word. We thank you for the simplicity and understanding. We thank you for the now the discerning of the things that need to be done as people go back and think on these things. I ask that this word that's been sown will be watered, that it will grow, that it will prosper and increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, as every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today 
and you're logging on and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to do so today. Receive Jesus. Receive him now. Listen, he's the lover of your soul. Jesus came to die. This whole story of redemption was about you. It was about me. It was about us. God wanting to restore the right fellowship and relationship with his creation. And Jesus came and died. And the Bible declares without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or taking away of sin. And he says, <clears throat> excuse me, he says this in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you would confess your mouth um, with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. That means with the heart, you believe that now you believe on what Christ has done. And as a result, you will be made righteous or in right standing with God. You don't have to do anything other than believe and receive what Jesus has already done. And with the mouth, it says confession is made unto salvation. So that when you declare with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you're going to follow this prayer with me that I'm getting ready to pray. The Bible says you shall be saved and you will be born again. Come on. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. If you confess that with your mouth and believed it when you spoke that, the Bible says you're saved. Listen, we want to hear from you. If that's you, and you just gotten born again, we want you to log on. Log on. Please log on. Let us know. Hey, I got born again today, following, listening, and watching the broadcast. I want, to, I want to know how do I walk this life out. We're here to help you. We want to teach you how to follow the Word of God, how to study the Word of God, how to now understand, how to apply this Word to your life to see results and to see transformation and change in your life. So, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to the body of Christ. The Spirit of Fire, Fe uh, Spirit of Fire Fellowship family welcomes you all to the body of Christ <coughs> of believers, and we thank God for you. Praise God. Also, if today you don't have a church home and you want to connect with us, you want to be a partner or a member of this ministry, of this work, we want you to reach out to us. We just thank God. There are people who've been connecting with us, and we thank God for you. And listen. You are part of this Spirit of Fire Fellowship family that God is doing something great with us and in us and through us. And we're going to begin now, even this year, to see greater things begin to take place. As y'all, I'm telling you, the, the things that we want to do, we want to do it together as a unit. So now we want you to be a part of this. If you want to connect with us, we want you to go ahead and follow the prompts um, to go to our website at spiritofire.us. It may be a connect um, card or information that comes up in the comments section or somewhere. Um, but you can also go to our website, spiritoffire.us, and fill out the connect form. And that now let us know who you are so we can have someone reach out to you and uh, touch bases with you to now obtain and to receive what you wanted to come out for. All right? So, praise God. So go there and do that. Also now, we want to honor God in our giving. Listen, after this opportunity... And we talked about the purpose of prosperity and seed time and harvest and things of that nature. Listen, if I talked about healing and didn't give you an opportunity to get healed, it would be messed up. If I talked about salvation but didn't give you an opportunity to get saved, man, that wouldn't even be right. Now, if I, we're talking about prosperity and success and even seed time and harvest, but if we don't give you that opportunity to sow, we want to make sure, listen, that, that will be, it will not be beneficial to you. I'm not preaching this message to get something from you. I'm preaching it because God wants to get something to you. And he wants you to increase, prosper, and have success. So I'm going to challenge you. If you have never sown, if you have not been sown, and you know you should have it, take this opportunity now to sow and to give. If you are connected with this ministry, and if you receive me as your pastor, and if you receive my wife and I as your pastors, but yet you are still have struggled with sowing and with giving. Listen, you got to check your heart. You really have to check your heart because where your treasure is, the Bible says your heart is. And if you have not sown, if you have not planted, you really have to see is your heart here. And this is important. That's important because if I look at your checkbook and if I look at your calendar, I'll see where your heart is. 
where you spend your time and you spend your money. So that's very important to understand. Citizen, giving is a worship unto God. We worship him in our giving. And so even as we begin to talk about giving more and we talk about the tithe and offerings and things of that nature, then listen, we worship God through our giving. We do it as an honor to him because he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we want to honor his goodness towards us. So at this, op- this moment, there's um, information that's coming up as to how you can sow, how you can plant, how you can give. And so our prayer is that God will increase your resources for giving. He'll take that seed that you sow, will multiply it, and you will see the maximum harvest off of it. And so we thank God for you doing that. So you have that opportunity to sow. I want to give you that chance. So, hey, guys, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. And so we just thank you so much. We love and appreciate you so much for taking this opportunity to come and to worship with us today. We want to thank our special guest once again, Brother R.J. Rufus Johnson, for coming out. We want y'all to go ahead, um, follow him. Um, you can put him up on social media, support his, his uh, new work, his new song, his um, single entitled Thank You um, is out there. Go ahead, download it, and um, help support the brother. Uh, we love him and appreciate him. And um, actually, he and his wife, I believe, also they're doing a great work that they're helping to provide scholarships for people going to HBCUs, historically black colleges, university. And so we want to um, be a blessing to them as well concerning that. So go there, um, follow them. Um, you just pull them up on um, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and you should be able to follow them by typing in Rufus Johnson and you'll see um, his, his tag with that. So, all right, y'all, we love you. We appreciate you. Um, and I was told, but I forgot to do this in the beginning. <laughs> we, we're now broadcasting on Periscope and Twitter. So we want to increase that as well. Let people know um, as we come on. Also, um, go to our YouTube channel, click subscribe, click the notifications button so that you can go ahead and uh, get notified when new content is coming up and uh, when we go live and things of that nature. So we appreciate you guys. We love you. Follow us on our social media platforms. Send it to other people. Let them know who we are so that they can be fed the word of God as well and grow thereby. Praise God. Hey, y'all. We get ready to head out now. <clears throat> We're going to celebrate the day, have fun with family and friends. Listen, we want you to celebrate with your family, celebrate with your loved ones. Have a great day. Live, love, and laugh. Listen, live life to the fullest. Love people unconditionally and learn how to laugh. In the midst of things and that situations, you got to learn how to laugh. Laughter does good like a medicine. Have fun. Enjoy life, man. I'm telling you, it's important. You'll live longer. You'll feel better. Okay, you'll feel better. Stop going around being grumpy and miserable all the time. Learn how to laugh. Laugh at yourself and have a good time. So I pray the peace of God upon you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The angels of God protect you forevermore. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Peace.